In December 2000, the state of California earmarked $100 million for each of four new institutes on University of California campuses to keep California on the cutting edge of tomorrow's technologies, building the next Silicon Valley or the next biotech hub. Enter the California Institute for Telecommunications and Information Technology, CalIT2, the partnership of UC San Diego and UC Irvine, one of the four winning initiatives. Ten years on, CalIT2 has leveraged more than $7 for every $1 provided by the state. And in the past four years alone, CalIT2 has chalked up nearly $250 million in federal foundation and other awards and gifts, and it has worked with 220 industry partners. The interaction with industry, the interaction with the community, uh, it's like a dream come true. One such dream, CalIT2's advanced facility at UC San Diego, housed in Atkinson Hall, a 215,000 square foot six-story headquarters that has won numerous awards for its innovative architecture, a design to support wireless research, and literally miles and miles of optical fiber for wired communication. Then there's Nano 3, the advanced clean room facility, one of the largest in San Diego, gets its name from the three areas of innovation it enables, nanoengineering, nanomedicine, and nanoscience. The facility offers 7,000 square feet of clean rooms equipped to fabricate and test new devices at the nanoscale. Researchers who design computer chips, for instance, use Nano 3 to build their prototypes. Nearly 100 research groups across campus now use the facility from 11 departments. And from the start, Nano3 has been open to corporate users. Some 60 companies have signed on so far, many of them high-tech startups. Looking back now, uh, it seems uh, like our, what at that time seemed like a sort of a, uh, a bold gamble uh, has paid off. Uh, it feels a lot more real now that telecommunications and IT can make a huge impact and as we look forward uh, to the next five to ten years, the areas of health, energy, environment, and culture all stand poised uh, to benefit and get transformed enormously through the use of telecom and IT. The multidisciplinary institute now brings together the talents and expertise of nearly 700 faculty from two dozen academic departments working on hundreds of projects. At their disposal, state-of-the-art engineering labs, such as the Photonics Lab at UCSD, where researchers have chalked up world records for next generations of optical systems to transmit more data much faster across computer networks. But CalIT2 is not just for engineers or physicists. It was very important for me from the beginning of the thinking about CalIT2 that the digital artists were a key part, an integral part, of what we were going to be about. And they project through their art, regardless of its form, futures, some dystopic, some utopic, it, it doesn't really matter. The point is they give us an early warning, an over-the-horizon radar that gets us to think uncomfortable thoughts about where we're going. And I think that has been uh, a critical success factor in CalIT2. CalIT2 has become a world leader in the area of scientific visualization and virtual reality. The new systems include successive generations of three-dimensional environments such as the Star Cave, which lets teams of researchers or students fly through proteins, for instance, or other applications, all in 3D and with a 360-degree field of view. Also at UCSD, CalIT2's Falco Kuster and his team build ultra-high resolution display systems, including some of the highest resolution in the world. What we see here is hyperspace, a rather unique scientific instrument for discovery and innovation. It operates at a third of a gigapixel of resolution, or equivalent to 150 times the resolution of HDTV today. And it finally puts scientific data back into our reach at a resolution where the resolution that was applied at while acquiring it matches that while we visualize the data. So what we see here right now is data from the Hubble Space Telescope. Going forward, CalIT2 will continue to work on technologies that enable the digital future, from photonics and wireless to nanosystems and cyber infrastructure, but also part of the Institute's strategic vision for its second decade, how to address societal challenges, particularly in four key areas, energy, the environment, 
agriculture and health. Example, the emerging field of wireless health. Everybody's dream is to have Moore's Law apply to healthcare, you know, twice as good, half the cost, uh, year after year. And clearly the way you're going to accomplish that is by taking advantage of technology, semiconductors, wireless communications. And I see us playing a very strong role in that entire chain from the creation of new sensors that can work off of phones, taking advantage of network connectivity, creating new ways of extracting diagnostic information, uh, making sense of the data, both genomic as well as behavioral, uh, and making a deep impact on healthcare. Larry Smarr believes that by focusing on key areas of interest to society, Cal IT2 can help tackle even the biggest problems facing the state and the globe. As we go into the future, climate change is going to provide a set of challenges to this state unlike any it's ever seen. It's going to impact the water, the agriculture. It's going to make it extremely difficult in the energy sector in living in the inland areas, uh, sea level rise. So as I think that alone will mean that we'll have to rethink basically everything about our society. Where do we live? Where do we grow our food? Where do we get our water? And how are we going to make that sustainable over the next hundred years? Ramesh Rao thinks that looking back after its next 10 years, Cal IT2 will see one of its legacies as creating a model for the modern research institution. We will be at the cutting edge of whatever is relevant at that point in time. You know, we have been a very organic place. We have continued to evolve. I don't think that's going to ever stop. Uh, as new capabilities emerge, as new needs emerge, I think Cal IT2 will again be at that front, forefront of experimentation, of innovation, uh, building prototypes, uh, trying things out. So what we're really looking at is how do we take basic research in the university integrate it at a system level and make it applicable to the real challenges that are facing California. And Smar might have said, the world. All this to ensure that Cal IT2's second decade is even more productive than its first.